Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back for another video. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to take this and turn it into this. Let's get it started. All right, so let's talk a little bit first. As toy collectors, or even better yet, uh, diorama makers, customizers, or anything else related to our toys, we're constantly trying to figure out ways to make things look better, more realistic, just something to give it that little bit of extra edge. Now, me being more of a, a newbie when it comes to the painting part of it, uh, I've, I've actually struggled with the same things, trying to recreate certain things, and there's plenty of solutions out there. Uh, even in paint, you can create these things. And by no means is this a shortcut. However, I stumbled across this. I reached out to the folks and uh, I asked them if I could test it out. And they said yes. So the folks over at Rustmaster Paints actually has a product that creates rust. Now, it's pretty cool. Uh, what I'm showing you right now, this is the, my first attempt right there. That's the finished product. And overall, I am very, very pleased. Uh, I also did one that's just solid right there. And again, it creates a very good looking rusted effect. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you all the steps to take a raw 3D printed shield, this is resin, and turn it into uh -huh, this. So uh, the product itself, it's four steps. I'll show you this first. Uh, and there's two color variants. Uh, there's an orange and a yellow based uh, color variant. But it's very simplistic. Uh, you have step one, you have step two, step three, and finally, step four. Now, uh, to give you a little bit of uh, uh, educational part with this stuff, you apply it, you let it dry, apply the next step, let it fully dry, apply the next step, dry, next step, dry, and then at the very, very end, you need to put some kind of a, a coat on it. I'm using on this one here, I actually used a matte, uh, finish a matte clear uh, because this is uh, water-based uh, if, if I'm not mistaken and it will come off so you need to seal it once you're done so without further ado let me get the camera uh, rearranged and we'll get it started all right so we got everything laid out and I want to show you something as, as well with this first one that I did I did not put any kind of coat underneath it no primer no nothing it's the pure raw print um, and it, it actually covered great. Um, and that's basically just doing a light wash of all, all four steps. Uh, this one here, I actually put a undercoat of hammered and I wanted that because I thought I'm not going to, I'm just going to do more of a blotchy, uh, on this. And I wanted some of the, uh, the hammer to come through. So we've got our raw print. All right, that's step one. You gotta print something or buy something or anything else. And this is what it looks like with the hammered paint on. I really like this hammered paint. Gives it a really nice little texture and this and that. So very, very cool. Another thing that I have, uh, I'm gonna sort of speed the process up. I do have a uh, hair dryer so, or a hot gun. And if you're curious, this is actually a low voltage uh, or low temperature mini heat gun. It does get hot, but it's uh, it's very, very nice for small things and it's a little easier to handle. Okay, so got our, got our towel, got our gloves. Step one, right there. Give it a little bit of a shake. Uh, now the beauty of this is, um, I didn't even dip it into the actual jar yet. I'm using what's on the lid. Uh, and it also, uh, the paint masters also, or rust masters also comes with a brush. So that's pretty cool. So I'm just going to do a light little dip. I'm not even going to 
get any of it off. I'm going to start really, really light and just go around it and just sort of speckle it. Because I do want a little bit of that hammered to show through. And, and I'll tell you what, the other thing about this too is no matter what you do, each one that you do will actually be different. I mean, you want a lot of rust, you want a little bit of rust, you want more rust on one side, and, and so on. So I'm just, like I said, just getting a very, very little bit on here and just giving it a little speckle. And plus, it dries quicker when there's less on it. I will probably at some point uh, change the brush type that I use for this. This is a good little brush. I'm very thankful they, they actually sent it. Um, and I want to use their brush because that's just the way to do it. So I'm thinking that right there. All right, so put that there. Go ahead and put the lid back on. Make sure it's nice and tight. And we'll set it aside. And we'll, uh, we'll dry this thing a little bit. I was thinking about doing this as a time lapse, but to be honest with you, um, I changed because I want you to see the whole process. I want to get a full time on it just so you actually know uh, the process. And if you just use a little bit at a time, it, it actually dries really, really quick. I do recommend uh, one, two, three blocks. Uh, they're very, very good about uh, using a lot of different things and as you can see I'm using it as a base all right step one right there looks pretty good so far all right step two it's the brown give it a little bit of a shake okay same thing I'm just going to use what's on the lid does that not look like chocolate pudding to you I'm serious. When I first opened it up, I was like, whoa, that looks like chocolate pudding. Okay. I will say this. I want to get the uh, the yellow color, too. And I, I'm going to reach out to them and ask them, can you do layers? Like, can you do a one and two of this and then a one and two of the yellow and then do a one and two of the orange and brown and a one and two of the yellow and brown? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to reach out and find out. If that's possible or can you do uh step one orange and yellow and then do a step two brown and then do orange i don't know i'm just i'm curious um but again it just depends on how much rust you want and i'll be honest with you i mean i've i've got books and things to where i'm trying to learn um you know, weathering and stuff like that. And I'm still going to continue that. Um, but sometimes it's nice to have a sort of a simple solution to get an effect that you're looking for. All right. I think that's good enough for the brown. All right. Got that. Uh, one thing I didn't do uh, before uh, this is just me. I clean my brushes in between. Uh, it's just a little alcohol. Just a, uh, There's not a, a lot on here, but I just clean my brushes. It's a, it's a good habit to get into. All right, let's dry this. I mean, already as it is, it looks actually pretty, pretty good. I'm actually pretty happy with it I'll show it to you uh, once I get it uh, through the drying cycle and this is a small piece so you know you can you can do it on all kinds of pieces you can I'm actually one of the things I'm thinking about doing is actually taking a, a sword from mythic legions and, and messing with that but all right there's step one and two now, you let me know in the comments, but honestly, I think that looks pretty good. I mean, it's not bad. Um, all right, step three. 
step three, got a spritz. This is probably the, uh, to me, the most interesting part of it because it's hard to, I'm not going to say it's hard to control the spritz. It's just, you know, <laughs> you, you, how, you know, the closeness of it. I'm probably uh, about 10 inches away and just little bitty spritzes. I'm not, I'm not going to like go crazy with it, but I will look at it and just see if it needs any more. And, and I understand this because it actually gives it a, um, a, a drop pattern, which is very, very cool. But you definitely don't want to go like crazy heavy on it. Because honestly, this right here, when I did this one, it was full coverage of all four steps. All four steps. This is turning out really, really nice. And you know, the thing I really do like about this, and I hope you can hear me over the, the heat gun. Again, I didn't want to do this as a time lapse. Um, but the thing I'm really digging about this the most is the fact that each thing you do will be different. All right, there's steps one, two, and three. Look at that. That looks flipping good. All right, last step, little spritz of the brown. I think that is more than enough. All right, let's heat it up. It's so much of a difference from the first one I did. And one of the things I'm really looking forward to this particular product is uh, some windows that I'm going to be doing for a diorama, some iron bar windows. And I want to put some rust on them. And I think this will be great. All right. Boom. All right. Look at that. Now, for comparison, this is the first one I did. This one's a little heavier, but again, you, you see what I'm talking about. You get differences. Each one you do will be different. So, yeah, let me uh, go uh, put a coat of clear on this. I'll come back and uh, we'll wrap things up. All right, everybody, we're done wrapping things up. Um, and uh, don't need gloves no more. <laughs> the um, first and foremost, uh, Rust Masters, thank you so much for uh, letting me check this product out. Uh, I'm I'm blown away by it. I think it's very very cool. I definitely think it has a a niche uh, for sure. Uh, for anybody that customizes, that can you know get 3D printed things or even things. Um, you know, like swords and and daggers and things and be able to put a rust finish on it in a simplistic way, I think it's genius. Uh, I think it's uh, amazing. Uh, it definitely opens up the doors for customizers. When you take figures, you know, and I'll use this one as an example, uh, this Mythic Legion with the armor and how you could actually go through on this armor and put dabs of rust on it. I mean, how cool is that? Um, 3D printed windows, you know, for diorama pieces. I mean, the, the, the options are limitless on this. Your imagination is your only hurdle. Uh, but to recap, raw print, raw print with no undercoat right there, just the raw print itself, fully covered in step one, two, three, and four. Um, this one right here is uh, with the hammered, and it's a little heavier on the rust, as you can see. Still looks great, no, no issues there. And finally, the one we did on the video right there. Again, a little lighter on the rust, which makes it customizable. I mean, think about it. You can do this, this route. You may want something that's completely rusted in a diorama, which there's nothing wrong with that. It's completely rusted. I mean, you can have any kind of um, 
options that you want. So I'm, I'm happy. I'm very happy with this. I like the fact that, um, you don't have to be a master painter, uh, to be able to create an effect. And that's the name of the game. Um, I personally am going to continue my, my education and learn how to create these things via paint because that's what I want to do. But to have a product that can give you this in what, what less than what, 15, 20 minutes. I, I don't know what it's going to be by the end of the video, but, um, it's no brainer. So definitely let me know in the comments what you think about it. Uh, definitely check out the description in the video because you'll see links to Russ Masters uh, social media and also uh, all their web presence. I will put descriptions in there. Uh, super nice people to talk to. Um, very, very informative. And uh, it's you saw how easy it was. It's not hard. Uh, the only thing that I personally will change is the brush. Um, I actually have some uh, dry brushing specific brushes and I think those may work a little better because of the, the bristles but you saw this brush works it's a little craft brush and get them anywhere but uh, yeah let me know in the comments I appreciate you uh, like giving me your thoughts on this uh, definitely check out my social media as well because that's where I'm gonna post photos of this right here and uh, yeah follow me if you want to if it's your first time on my channel, if you enjoy this type of content or toy hunting, 3D printing, cosplay, everything else I do on my channel, do me a favor, consider hitting that subscribe button, but make sure if you subscribe, turn on notifications. That way you'll see when I do videos and live streams and shorts and pretty much everything else related to my channel. And finally, please always remember things that allow you to customize your toys refreshes your soul and i'll see you next time